Hey guys, it is FAQ Friday. Uh, before we start though, I wanted to bring up something that I hate having to deal with. Just things like this bug me. And I went back and forth whether I should bring it up or not, but I see that more and more people are being drawn into this and I just, I have to say something. Uh, so I'll make it as short as possible. There is a group on Facebook that is impersonating our Facebook group and pulling in uh, n probably new subscribers. So this group's been around for a month or two. It's called Next Level Garden. It was called Next Level Gardening. And then Paula, the uh, creator of our Facebook group, I was talking with her about it and she basically sent him a message, I sent him a message, and he changed it to Next Level Garden. Um, however, he is impersonating the group by talking about YouTube videos like they are his, um, putting Neptune's Harvest on there, just doing some weird stuff. And I became a member of this group, probably one of the first members because I got a notice that it had come up and I'm like, that's weird. And so he doesn't know who I am apparently because he let me in. And I've just been kind of a spy seeing what's going on because I just thought it was fishy that he was using our name. It was, it seemed very non-threatening. However, a lot of people are now joining that group and asking as if they're asking questions to me. So that's when it became a little more personal because I don't really have the ability to answer those questions freely because it's not my group. There's just been a few things that have been said on there where he is, the, the creator of this group is asking for items and money, it seems, uh, to start his farm. But it's just, it's just all weird. So here's the thing. I've had some great viewers go over to his group, um, become members, and then tell him what they thought of him. And I do appreciate that. I do. Uh, my biggest concern is getting people into the right group. I don't know what his plans are for the future. I don't know what his motive is to do all this. That remains to be seen. So if you know anybody who is in Next Level Garden, I tried to message as many people as I could who were members in there and who were commenting as if they were asking me questions. And I tried to, to message as many of them and say, this is the wrong group you're looking for this group. So just heads up everybody, if you are watching my channel and are looking to join our Facebook group, it is Next Level Gardeners. And when we created the group, I made it that because it was about a group of gardeners. It wasn't about necessarily my channel as it was all of us in a community as gardeners. So that's why the, the name Next Level Gardening wasn't taken as a group which I might want to rethink things now. Right, Paula? Let me know what you think. Anyway, um, so let's get on to Next Level Gardening, FAQ Friday. Okay, the first question. Uh, watched every single video of yours this year recovering from knee surgery and after to build up my garden and skill set. I planted everything and unfortunately I wasn't expecting to move so fast, but I bought a new home. Hey, I know how that goes. I will still come back to tend my garden for the remainder of this year. That's cool. Do you have any recommendations on what I could do with an HOA that has strict rules? Maybe I could use some plants as a fence to hide a smaller garden, or am I going to be stuck with a container gardening on my deck? Well, last year, right before I had to move very quickly, um, I had started a edible landscape. Well, it was a series. I think I only did one or two videos based on the book Edible Landscaping by Rosalind Creasy. I recommend that book for you because it's going to give you a lot of great ways to mask the fact that you have a vegetable garden by hiding those in and among flowers. I'll put a link. I have another couple of book reviews uh, for, for questions that are, that are going to come up. All those will be down below in the video description. Links to those so you can find them. Brian, thank you for all you do. My zucchini plants are only having male flowers. Is there anything I can do to get some female flowers? Well, about this time of year, every year I get this question from a lot of people, so I think it's worth addressing every single year. That's normal. You might have more male flowers in the beginning, more female flowers in the beginning. 
um, it will all even out. It just might take some time and you might lose a few female flowers that don't get pollinated or you might get worried that there's no female flowers, but it'll all even out. Give it some time. It'll work. I'm ready to purchase my first water drip system. What do you recommend for a first time user? I have tomato plants in five gallon buckets and 10 gallon buckets or 10 buckets. I'm actually uh, trying drip tape this year. It's something I've been thinking about and uh, I finally jumped in. I will actually be doing that video tomorrow showing you how I added it and, and worked it into the vegetable, the new vegetable garden. I would not recommend that for buckets. It is really for longer rows of crops, um, raised beds, long in-ground beds. You'd still want to stick with drip and for a five gallon bucket, you either can get drip emitters that put out, you know, a gallon an hour and then you know how to regulate it when you're to see how many, how long you need to run that. Uh, or you can take small lengths of the drip tube, make them into a circle with a T connector and hook that into your main line. Um, I have a, several videos on drip. So if you watch those, you'll understand what I'm talking about there. But for you, um, I would also, anybody who's looking to buy a drip system, I would watch my videos to see what you need and how they all work out. And I would stay away from the kits. There's, there's some drip irrigation kits. I think I even have one under products I love for people who are really in a pinch. But I do think you save more money and get what you need by buying things individually as you need them. I think you buy a kit and you end up having too much of one thing and not enough of one thing and then you have to end up buying more anyway. So stay away from the kits and I would just watch my videos and buy things separately. I'll put a link to those videos in the video description. Brian, I'm using the grassroots bags for my tomatoes for the first time and have some questions. You say consistent watering. Question is, when I'm watering, how do I know how much? When I see the bottom get wet, I don't want to overwater or underwater either. Thanks for your help. So with regular pots, um, they have the drainage holes in the bottom and you want to water all the way until you see those drainage holes really pouring water out. Then you know you've probably got the entire pot wet. The grass root bags are a little bit different because they don't have those drainage holes. So what you will see if you're using the kind that has the, um, the moisture barrier, then you're not gonna ever see the sides get wet. So yes, wait until you see the entire ring at the bottom of fabric get wet and when you've got kind of it puddling up in the top. You want to see both of those things, and then you know you've got your bed or your, your pots really saturated. And then just use the finger method, stick your finger in a couple inches down, see if it's, if it's watered or if, it's, if it still needs some more. New gardener here, question. Is it okay to do the aspirin spray when the plant is already flowering and has fruit growing? Also, any plants I shouldn't spray it on. I have zucchini, bell peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes. So the first question, yes, it's okay to spray the aspen spray when the plant is blooming uh, and or fruiting. It can be sprayed all the way through the season, every two weeks, especially in wet weather. As far as what you shouldn't use it on, um, it's not going to hurt anything, but it only works on uh, plants in the nightshade family. So tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and eggplant. Have you ever considered growing your own wheat? I think you have enough land. I know you are a sourdough master. Um, yes, I have, and I even bought a bunch of seed, but I haven't, and this is Mike, and Mike, uh, is he is the sourdough master. He actually taught me, he sent me my first starter, he taught me, you know, his ways on how to make sourdough, and I've been perfecting it, you know, just working and, and trying to, uh, a little bit it works a little bit different for everyone is what I'm finding out and so I'm trying to perfect it and I'll probably have a video on the homestead channel showing you how I make my sourdough we are now at a point where we don't use any other bread other than the sourdough that we make as far as growing the wheat for it I definitely will try to grow some wheat I think the process might be a little bit more labor intensive than I want um, and I don't know that I'm going to have the land to produce as much wheat as it would be to keep us in bread for the year. So 
stay tuned and I'll let you let you know on all of this. So, oops, I bought some tomatoes from the local community college's horticultural department a month or so ago for their annual sale. And as I'm ready to plant later here after some weird weather, found out they're huge. Does the string method I was planning on trying in containers in a small space work with any variety? Specifically, celebrity, early girl, better boy. Uh, find lots of conflicting information. If not, what can I do with the seedlings I've been nurturing? Uh, so the string method will work on any indeterminate plant. So Google the names of the things you're growing. If they're indeterminate, the string method will work. Um, you want to use the right string. If you're using our hooks, they come with the string. I'll put a link below. The string is rated for as heavy a plant as you could possibly grow. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the size of the plant. If they're indeterminate, you're also going to be picking out the side growth, which will keep the plant lighter. So yeah, it will work for any indeterminate tomato plant. Next one. I had the experience of planting a banana pepper next to an ornamental hot pepper, and the first fruits that came off were fine, but later in the season, my husband asked me if I was trying to kill him. He doesn't do spicy. I told him he was crazy, but when I bit into the banana pepper, it was like fire hot. So I'm going to keep my pepper separated, just saying. So I think this is in response to when I said that the peppers or whatever you're growing it won't change that generation. It will change the next generation when you grow from seed. Now, I'm wondering if you got some seeds or part of the seed membrane um, from these peppers. In that situation, if you're eating the seeds of the fruit, those are the seeds for the next generation. So that could, could make them a little bit hotter if you're growing near hot plants and they cross pollinate. Does that make sense? It also is the same with corn because you're eating the corn seeds, right? So if you plant grain corn next to sweet corn, they will cross pollinate and it will affect that generation, that, that harvest. The sweet corn might be a little starchy like the grain corn would be. So probably should have clarified on the last one. For the most part, if it's a fruit, it's not gonna change the fruit. But if somehow the seeds are involved with that fruit and eating those seeds, then it could, uh, if you're eating those seeds, change the heat or the consistency. I'm in the process of buying a five acre property. Any tips on planning layouts of land use, garden space, fruit trees, and bush spacing, and chickens, pig, etc. Okay, here's where I've got two books for you. Um, the first book is called The Backyard Homestead. And this actually goes through a few different layouts for your garden and some small animals. Uh, this is a one-tenth of an acre. This is a quarter acre or a half an acre on this page. This book, which I'm actually still in the process of reading, I just got it about a week ago. It has some layouts as well. This is called The, this is called the, the Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. This really tells you everything you need to know if you're gonna get a homestead. And this has some smaller layouts, the one acre farm, a community garden plot, or just what you said, the five acre farm. I love the illustrations in this book. This is the five acre farm. It's got where you can grow your wheat, where you can grow fruits and vegetables, beehives, duck houses, soft fruit, grazing pasture, hay, I mean, really this has everything i mean but really this book look at these um illustrations of all of the herbs and vegetables and fruits i love this book so far so i'll leave a link to both of those below and hopefully that will help answer that question hi i've been growing tomatoes for years in pots and never had any issues but this year my whopper tomatoes have brown soft spots on the bottom before they have even turned yellow, let alone red. My cherry tomatoes are pruning, shriveling up like they're rotten, how our fingers are after swimming, that look. I also have an issue with my bell peppers this year as well, where they are indented, almost going into a U shape and brown spots on it. Okay, this to me sounds like a watering issue, especially knowing that they're in containers um, containers, you, you have to keep moist consistently, like 
they need to be moist all the time. If it dries out, fruits are going to shrivel, peppers are going to curl, and you will get blossom end rot, which is what you're talking about here. Brown soft spots on the bottom even before they turn red. Keep it consistently moist. Use the finger test. Add drip if you have to on a timer so you don't forget, because if you're like me, I forget. Um, but that's what you've got going on here. So Mary asks, is your wife into gardening also? Well, after 25 years almost together, she is not. <laughs> Which shows you, you really have to have the passion to, to be a stick with it gardener. She's come out and she helps me, but she doesn't get the enjoyment I get out of the garden. For her, she's helping me, it's a chore. She's doing what she needs to do. For me, I could be out doing it all day long and still not have enough. Thanks a ton, Brian. I just recently found your channel. It's helped me tremendously this year. You're welcome. Uh, I do have a couple questions though. Number one, you said in a previous video that peppers are perennials. Does this also include green peppers or just hot peppers? All peppers, bell peppers, chilies, anything you wanna call them, they're all perennial. Number two, I seem to have a problem with ants eating on my beans and mint. Is there a barrier available? I want to block them from my other plants but I also have peonies, so I don't want to kill them off completely. So right, I, I can't grow peonies here, but from what I have heard, the ants somehow help with the bloom being able to open. It is hard. I had a lot of ants at my last house. I haven't seen many here yet. That could change. They were one pest that I was never able to fully eradicate. Um, diatomaceous earth helped, but you have to continue applying it. You can actually mix it in water and spray it on. It won't start working until it dries, however. Or you can just mix it into the soil where they're working and that will, um, if not kill them, it will. they won't like the feeling of it and they'll go somewhere else. Problem is they probably just go to another part of your garden. So if you guys have surefire ways to get rid of ants, I'd love to hear them. I haven't been able to pass on any useful knowledge other than that because I haven't found anything that has worked for me, you know, really well. So leave it down below in the comments. If you have used something organic, please, um, that has worked. Next question. My cherry and delicious tomatoes plants are about two and a half to three feet high. They just started flowering. Should I allow these flowers to fruit or should I remove them? So this has to do with the belief that uh, if you take off the first flowers, you're putting more energy into root growth and plant growth before fruiting. And then and then, then once that's done, you can start allowing it to fruit and the plant will have a lot more power and energy to, to put into those first fruits. The only, yes, I do do that. I live in a long growing season though. If you have a shorter growing season and you want to maximize it, sometimes you don't want to do that because you're taking off maybe some of the only fruits that are going to produce before your weather turns cold. So I would say in the most, in most cases, yes, you want to do that unless you have a short growing season, then don't do it. Brian, you're awesome. Thank you. And I've learned so much from your videos, but for the Q and A, do you think you'll do a collaboration? with Kevin from Epic Gardening. Well, Jeremy, we've talked and uh, we were gonna do something and then we both got really busy. It was right before I moved and things never happened. So if you guys wanna see, and he doesn't live that far from me actually. So if you guys wanna see a collaboration between me and Kevin at Epic Gardening, I'd love to do it. Let him know, let him know you wanna do it and I would be happy to do it anytime he's available. Oh, I guess that was the last question. So here's the thing going forward, um, I'm going to take questions from, from the previous week's video. So down below this video, if you can ask your question for next week, that would be great. Put it in all caps, write question in all caps, and then write your question. That helps me as I'm going through this for a second time, looking for the questions to use. Um, it just makes things a little bit easier for me. So if you don't mind question in all caps, write your question and hopefully I'll get to it. 
So thanks guys for joining me. I hope you're getting a lot out of this. I heard from a lot of you that really, I'm glad I brought this back. This is something we did back in 2020. Um, I think it's a great way to kind of have more of an open dialogue and conversation about gardening rather than me just kind of preaching to you for 15 minutes about a specific plant. By the way, I finally, after how long, I don't know, I finally got most of my vegetable garden planted the past couple of days. Um, so I did two videos on that. I did the drip video, I put that in first, and then I did uh, the planting video. So the drip video should be up tomorrow, Saturday, and then Sunday uh, will be the planting video. So full weekend of Next Level Gardening. Hope you guys enjoy it, I'll see you next time.